Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Car Question. Matt riding the Volvo XC40R design and finally something new in the lineup of Volvo. It was about time and they created a nice problem with that luxury subcompact crossover. There's a lot of demand for it. So at the time that we did the video, it was like five months before you can get one here in Quebec. I don't know in the States, I don't know in Europe, but feel free to comment in the section down there below if you got yours or if you're waiting for one, because Volvo will need to produce more of these dot bread. And it's completely understandable when you look at the exterior design. I love it. You know, I try a lot of vehicles, I see a lot of them, but this one is looking really great. It's in my top 10 design of the year you've got that original design but also really unique it's not looking like anything else on the market when you look at the front the grill the black accent you look at the Taurus light same thing also for the rear real high and they put the plate real low but it's looking real great the white the black the R design mentioned right there on the side and those big wheels with the accent of black once again and you've got great Pirelli tire to give you some great bites when you're going to be entering some corners and this vehicle is a head turner everybody's telling me wow it's looking real nice what is that or yeah i was waiting for one but it's taking too much time when you look inside it's a big wow once again except maybe for that red fabric the carpet as i could tell it when you rub it you can feel that it's kind of strange but you know it goes right there within that segment you pay a lot less for this one when you compare it to an xc90 so that's why sometimes you've got those kind of material but it's still looking great for me but i got a lot of mention that a lot of people People didn't like still with the Harman Kardon mention in the door the silver all the materials are of great quality and the build the assembly is once again impressive You've got a big screen just like an iPad which contains the Volvo Sensus system. You've got folding cargo floor with hooks for shopping bags in the rear and this is so functional. You can use it also to retain some moving parts and you don't want anything to be hit in the trunk. You've got a lot of space 479 liters. You've got a lot of technology with the wireless smartphone charging pad, power folding rear seat and you've got an amazing sound system, 13 speaker Harman Kardon that you will hear some kind of strange noise, you know, when you're listening to the radio, that kind of echo that you usually don't hear with the other cars. But this one is so precise. You will know who's got a great studio by just listening at your favorite radio station and you will hear the echo in some other that it's not really great, but it's often masked by the low quality of other cars sound system. Functional is also the term that I can use to describe the interior of that Volvo. Look at right there in the glove box, the little hook so that your lady can put her handbag right there and it won't move away and she will be able to reach it anytime. You can also use it for your work bag. And if you're looking right there in the center console, yes, you've got that wireless charger, but another section for a little phone. And how about the cup holders? Really functional, nice size. And another section right there to put whatever you want in easy access to the USB connector up front. Want more storage space to hide some stuff right there under the driver's seat. A little storage compartment that you can pull out and you can also adjust your seat base if you want while you're checking what's inside. Talking about seat base, okay for you, but in the rear, kind of short, you're sitting really in upright position also. Let's talk about the engine. You've got different version depending in the country that you're living in. You've got the T4 version that you can go for. Front wheel drive or all wheel drive 2.0 liter turbo engine, 187 horsepower at 4,700 RPM or 221 pound-feet of torque between 1,400 and 4,000 RPM. You can go for the T5. The T5 is the only available version right here in Canada. In the States, you can also get it. It's all-wheel drive only, 2-liter turbo, 248 horsepower at 5,500 and 258 pound-feet of torque between 1,800 and 4,800 RPM. 
And if you're living in Europe or anywhere else in the world, you might have access to a T-Tree three-cylinder 1.5 liter turbo engine, 154 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 195 pound-feet of torque, 1,850 until 3,850 RPM. And you can get a manual six-speed with that one. Other market automatic six-speed, but right here, it's only eight-speed automatic that we can get. And you still can get some diesel version of that one, but I'm pretty sure it's not gonna come to North America. And they're gonna leave soon the market because Volvo told us that they want electric engine, that they want some kind of electrification in their vehicle real soon and real fast. So the version that we have is an all-wheel drive. They're using a compact and lightweight coupling Borg Warner Generation 5 that will distribute the engine power between the front and the rear. Under normal dry condition, practically all the power is distributed to the front wheels, just like a front wheel drive. And the system will constantly calculate the need of torque to the rear wheels and can instantly send 50% of that power through those wheels. When you're gonna be at a standstill, full wheel drive is always engaged to be prepared for a request for maximum traction. We tested that one in the snow, diagonal test. I was really impressed what we were able to do. And in the snow, in the image that you're gonna see, well, real icy, real slippery, some ice under the snow, you know, those kind of temperature that you've got a big mix up and even wet grass is really slippery. So all those conditions mixed up made a really loose surface where there was no traction, momentum was the key and sometimes the transmission just hesitates, sending me more power, shifting, losing the momentum even with the drive mode into off-road but was still very challenging because of the tires also that I was running on. Still, it was impressive to see all those wheels working together. Look at that great slow motion where you can see it's exactly turning at the same speed, 50-50 power, predictable. So Volvo has a great all-wheel drive system also. And look at that snow fly. God, it's impressive what we were able to do in those kind of conditions. And always be careful, guys, on the image that you're looking on the internet. There is so many type of snow, so many type of surface, and often, what you don't see is the most challenging one. Right now, the ice, you can see that it, that it was there until you roll on the snow, until you get to the grass, and until you get to that hard surface where there was some ice. Still impressive power coming out of those little Volvo engines. So let's talk about the road handling of that vehicle. Well, it's the first car out on its new compact modular architecture of Volvo. And you can also press on the button to change the different drive modes. And these modes will affect the steering effort, the brake pedal feel, the travel response, even sometimes the all-wheel drive stability system. It will also enable hill descent control in off-road mode and you will be able to save some fuel if you want into the eco mode. The comfort mode is the default mode that you're gonna be using every day for normal use if you want. The dynamic is gonna be much more for an inspired driving. And when you enable off-road mode, this is where you can feel a big difference with the reactivity of the accelerator pedal, but also how it will affect the repartition of the power front to rear. Also, you can turn off traction control if you want, for much more momentum. Still, you can configure also an individual mode depending on what you want to feel when you're gonna be driving. Acceleration are good, but noisy. That sound of that engine is not that great. You still got some quick reaction once you're gonna roll, but sometimes the transmission is searching its gear. Even more into slippery situation where it will change up until eight gear. If there's a lot of wheel spin, then it will think about what to do and you're stranded. There you go, you cannot move anymore. Direction, stable into turns, lightweight, good responses, 0.84 Gs of cornering, but you can hear those tires as soon as they give up. When they're putting on too much heat, there you go, it's gonna give up. The braking power is kind of impressive. It's linear, but you've got some pedal travel. And if you're gonna hit it hard, don't be surprised. The bell will hold you into place because Volvo is all about security. The suspension kind of knocking sometime. 
when you're going to go on to those uneven surface into city with the big wheels that we have you will feel the bumps but i can also feel that it's much more softer in the rear than in the front still off-road not too much problem she was able to take the bumps but when your driving style will be sporty well it's not as good as a bmw x1 or x2 much more sportier for that one but also less comfortable when there's a bunch of bumps out there count for general is impressive up front for the driver for the passenger but in the rear real upright short seat base also but it's typical of those little vehicles fuel octane 91 is going to be required and they were talking about and now i'm laughing 7.2 liter by 100 ha sacre bleu c'est pas vrai c'est pas vrai oh non mes amis on oublie ça we're gonna forget that because that's not real true 12.7 liter right there in the cluster 11.8 right here for my driving week and where do they get that 7.2 probably some over accelerated numbers i don't like that and remember this is only a little 2.0 turbo engine so it's real thirsty towing capacity is going to be rated at 3500 pounds though and remember that with other vehicle in the segment the x1 the mini the gla they're not able to tow it's not recommended so security you've got all the city safe feature of volvo and for that manufacturer security is important it's the most important thing when you're going to be driving that vehicle they don't want nobody to die behind the wheels of a volvo as soon as you start the vehicle you will see appear a complete list of security features that are enabled to make sure that everything is okay and you've got some great warnings great unique stuff as soon as you're entering a school zone there you go you've got the display inside and also for that photo radar that i'm seeing on the road still for the fixed one but not the mobile one but thank you so much volvo you saved me a ticket on that one still for the rest collision warning blind spot monitoring cross traffic alert name it structural integrity really resistant i've talked to you about the belt also who are going to hold you in place all those sensors warning you of what's around the vehicle the 360 the camera which is Mwah, mamma mia so clear i love the design i love also how you see the vehicle and how clear it is that's what i like and one of the nicest features probably the volvo pilot assist that you can use so you enable it and there you go into traffic into highway mode you just have to sometimes do a little bit of correction to make sure that you're there but it's some kind of autonomous driving that volvo is making accessible with the xc40 so you've got a lot of competition out there bmw x1 x2 a little bit more sportier but still not as unique as that volvo xc40 mini cooper countryman is another contender talking about a unique car that if you like a lot of gadget you can go for this one unique look also but not the same feeling and the same security feature that you're going to find in the volvo i really love the jaguar e-pace which is looking real cool the mercedes-benz gle is just another contender with the german fighters out there attacking that segment giving you some great interesting performance and also luxurious vehicle od q3 talking about the last one of the german contenders this is the one so they're so strong they've got great sales but for the od the generic look that you see everywhere not as refined and as functional as the volvo xc40 lexus is going to compete itself with the nx and the ux really soon so reliable lexus is but once again not the same head turner that you can get with the xc40 infinity qx30 which is selling well right here in north america still interesting to take a look at and also a great performer the land rover range rover evoke is also a strong contender but much more an off-road machine than a reliable one the Cadillac xt4 is a new contender in the ring and will also give you a great image great standing but also a lot of function for the price that you're going to pay so the minus points of the volvo xc40 well when it's getting cold i hear some cracking 
probably over there right on top with the sunroof that I have, which is really big, by the way. You've got that multimedia system, the senses, which is kind of impressive to use, but still it needs time to boot. And sometimes I want my heated seat so much that I press, I press, I press, and it's not reacting. It needs sometimes to boot just like the old day with some old DOS game. Otherwise, you need to get accustomed to that system, even if simplicity is the word, even when you look everywhere inside the Volvo where there's minimal button, but each are really useful and each will give you access to a unique function. The seat base is kind of short, even worse in the rear, where you're real upright. Still, the space is not too bad. One of the biggest minus points, though, is the fuel consumption. I'm most effective of that. And you've got the sound of the engine at full throttle, which is not music to the hear for a luxury vehicle. On the plus side, head turner inside and out. It's one of my coup de coeur cette année. I really love that vehicle. Also, it's going to detect your photo radar. That's a big thumbs up for me. And you've got also all the functionality inside that vehicle, which once again makes a great vehicle in overall. So you've got full of storage compartment in such a little vehicle. You've got that big screen that I really like, which is giving you that impression of technology. The sound system, amazing sound that I really like. And one unique warranty here in Canada. So let's say that your initial warranty is over. So if you go in for repair at the dealer, you pay for the parts, not brakes, not brake pads, but let's say a turbo, you pay full price. And the next time if it breaks, well, you're gonna be fully cover it that's going to be for the service for the part so it's going to cost you nada to replace it one more time but you cannot transfer that unique warranty so finally a win a fresh is blowing right there in the volvo lineup with the xc40 really like that vehicle it's one of my coup de coeur as i said it a little bit earlier so what do you like about this vehicle feel free to comment in the section down there below don't forget diagonal testing acceleration also some Light snow fun, but remember it was real icy. Otherwise, subscribe to Car Question. You've got the little bell. You can press that. I'm doing more and more premiere also video. Feel free to ask me anything you want. We are here for that. And we're going to see each other again in another video of Car Question. Take care.